Thanks everybody for tuning in and checking out this video on One Baptism. What we're going to be looking at specifically are passages from Ephesians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 1, and even Matthew 3. But uh, until we get in there, before we get into there, let's pray together and just make sure we're kind of focused on the same deal. God, we know that we are in all kind of different life experiences right now as, as we watch and listen to this. So we pray, Lord, that you will speak to us through your word and help us to see the word that you have for us that we might become more like Christ. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, what we have here is we've been going through our one series and, and looking especially at Ephesians 4 at all of the different sort of ones. So one Lord, one faith, one Father of all. Specifically, we're going to look at one baptism. So let me say this about baptism. If, if you've not been baptized, first of all, if you've not been baptized and you're a Christian, then you're missing out on a huge sacred opportunity for intimacy with God. Obviously, if you're not a Christian, that makes perfect sense. You shouldn't have been baptized because you become a Christian first, then baptism. So if you are a Christian, though, and you've never been baptized, I would say to you, you are missing out on a vital sacred piece of the Christian faith and walk, something that Jesus commands and shows and models, but also something that just kind of helps proclaim forth your faith in Jesus Christ and the trust that you put in him. So I would encourage you, if you've not done that yet, uh, to do that. We're gonna, that's what we're going to talk about a little bit more. It's about this baptism and what's this one baptism and what does it uh, mean. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, you're going to want to uh, find that in your Bible. You're going to want to find that. It's in the New Testament uh, on your app. But we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. So what we see is Paul addressing to the Ephesians and, and really to the entire Christian world that there is only one baptism and that there is only one baptism which really has any meaning or any value. So what is that baptism? What's the difference between being baptized and just splashing around in a pool? Being baptized and taking a bath? Being baptized and just getting water on your face? What, what's the difference there? And, and we're going to look at some of those. But I, I want to draw kind of one thing out for you so that um, you can just sort of understand and have this as a filter. Baptism is essential and moves us closer to God. Baptism is essential for the Christian. It always comes um, salvation first, then, then baptism. That's the way the Bible talks about it. But baptism is essential and moves us closer to God. Baptism is simply an outward expression of your already inner faith in Jesus Christ. So like I said before and said earlier, if you're not a Christian, then certainly you're not going to get baptized. So what that also means is you need to be a Christian followed as quickly as possible by baptism to just set that up, to talk to whomever is sort of the spiritual authority in your life and seek out what needs to happen with that. So baptism is an outward expression of your already inner faith in Jesus Christ. So the question may see if, if I want to be baptized, which you should be as a Christian, then, then how do I become a Christian? How do I begin to move my life in that direction? So we want to talk about salvation because it's absolutely vital. No baptism is valid without salvation. I mean, that's just the way it is. You, you, you see that in scriptures. Everyone who was baptized was always a Christian. So here's what we find, at least in the eyes of God, that's what creates a valid baptism. So Romans 10, 9 and 10, I like Joel 2:32. Uh, Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. Isaiah even talks about it. Look, look to me and be saved. That it talks about towards God, towards Jesus. Now, salvation is God's free work of grace through the well let me just put it in the in gospel message terms jesus cried died on the cross for your sins he was he he was risen from the grave by the power of god according to scriptures that's the good news of the gospel message jesus died on the cross so you wouldn't have to pay the penalty of your sin which is death that's the wages of sin it will cost you eternal death and separation from god if you don't accept Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Now, look, it's free. It's for anyone who wants it, for anyone who would accept it, anyone who would call Jesus Lord and Savior. 
just imagine what it would be like to be just unconditionally forgiven for all your wrong doings, all your wrong sayings, and all your wrong thinkings. Just completely that. Those that you know about, those that you don't, just completely covered and completely saved. That's salvation. And Jesus' perfect life, death, and resurrection allows for him as the Son of God to be the one to substitute himself for you, to stand in a place where you never could stand, to hang on the cross, to give his life freely so that you might be saved. And if that's you, and if you're watching this and listening to this and you're not saved, then my encouragement to you is this, be saved. Uh, I like to say it this way, don't wait for today, it's too long, do it right now. Drop to your knees in submission to God, wherever you may find yourself. Bow your head out of respect and reverence. And ask God to forgive you for your sins. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God and Lord and Savior and be saved. Because you're saved by grace through faith. Through no works of your own, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. So that you might live in such a way as God had created you to. To fulfill the wonderful plan He has for your life, no matter how unwonderful life gets. But let's look a little further here and, and take a passage of scriptures. Five years before Paul wrote the letter to the Ephesians, he writes a letter to the Corinthians because they're just going through all kinds of mess um, as a body of believers, as a, as a sort of the, the local church of believers. And he writes this letter five years before Ephesians because they're really wrestling with baptism. And there's all kinds of these thoughts that are going. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'll give you a second to find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we see the reason why Paul's even reiterating more and more, inspired by God, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to clarify what we are. And remember that phrase, one baptism? Well, this passage of Scripture in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 10, helps us to under, uh, uh, sort of understand and unpack why this one baptism thing is so important. Let's just follow along, read it, get your Bible, get ready to circle, highlight whatever the Lord leads you and impresses on you to do in the Word. So 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 10 through 17. I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there's no division among you, that you would be united in the same mind, in the same judgment. There's the oneness. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brothers. And here's what I mean by the, chlorine, the, 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 the quarreling that's taking place. I follow Paul, some of you say, or I follow Apollos, or I follow Cephas, or, or oh, I follow Christ, right? So there's all these divisions rising up in the body of Christ and, and separating local church homes and local church gettings together because they're saying this. Paul's question response in verse 13, is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? No, Jesus Christ was. Or were you baptized in the name of of Paul? No. No, you weren't. I thank God that I, Paul, baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one may say that I was baptized in, in Paul's name. Oh, and I did baptize also the household of Stephanus, but, but beyond that, whether, whether I baptized anyone else, he just he doesn't remember. He, he doesn't recall. For Christ did not send me. This is interesting about Paul. Look at this, about Paul's sort of relationship uh, with baptism. For I for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, and not with words of eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. So Paul was sent to, to share the gospel message first, and then there were other people that assisted in the baptism of all those who were saved. And he's like, look, I'm not trying to empty out uh, the cross of Christ by the power of these wide words, but, but here's what happened. Five years later, Paul's writing to the Ephesians, and these letters would have been circulated among all the Christian brothers and sisters, no matter where they meet, whether they had a church or they met at homes or out in the field or in, in caves hiding from Nero. Didn't matter. This would be circulated. And the divisions in the church were arising from inside because everybody was claiming, whoever baptized me, that's who I'm following. So Crispus baptized me. I'm following Crispus. Cephas or Peter or Paul or Apollos or, or I was... You know, none of us were baptized by Christ because they had this misunderstanding of what baptism really was. So there were all these disagreements, this un-oneness, this disunity about baptism and who we're baptized in. But the Bible makes it clear. You're baptized in the name of the God, the Father, God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's where our baptism comes from. So 
Paul just lays that out and says, look, he's asking these rhetorical questions that you're like, no, 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 no to all the answers because it's yes, 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 Jesus. Is Christ divided? No. Was Jesus crucified for you? Yes. Were you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Yes. And that's why he asked in sort of the, the converse of that. When, we, when you were baptized, what was it? You were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Not in the name of the person baptizing you, the pastor that baptized you, the small group leader that baptized you, the neighbor that baptized you, the guy at the Jordan River who baptized you because you've already been baptized. You want to be baptized again and go through the motions because you're at the Jordan River. Not that guy. Not those things. That's not valid to think that way, that that, that baptism is more. But instead, he says here, it's Christ who does these things. And in fact, Christ didn't even send Paul to baptize, but to share the gospel message. That was other people's role. Another part of the body of Christ. It's the beauty of the oneness. That we don't have to do everything in the body of Christ. We just have to do the one thing that God calls us to. And remember the one thing. Baptism is essential for every Christian. And it moves us closer to God. Look at Matthew 3, right? If you're going to talk about baptism, you want to, you want to see how Jesus responded and interacted with baptism. What do we see in Jesus' response to baptism? So John's out there preaching the baptism of repentance through water. So it was a symbol of them going under and, and repenting and saying, I'm turning from my evil ways. I'm turning from my wrong ways, the wrong thinkings and doings. I'm turning from sin and I'm going to start just acting better. That's what I'm going to do. That's just kind of what John was talking about. That's sort of the water baptism, the symbol of, of acting the better. I'm going to live like Christ. Well, then Jesus is coming towards John the Baptist, comes to him and says, it is time for me to be baptized. I want to be baptized. And then in Matthew chapter 3, we're going to look at verse 14. Here's what we see in John and Jesus' response to baptism. John would have prevented Jesus from being baptized, saying that, I need to be baptized by you, Jesus. And do you come to me? Who am I to baptize the Son of God? But then Jesus answered him, an answer that reverberates forward through all of human history and for all of eternity as a praise to God and as a call and a command and a mandate for us. But Jesus, in verse 15 of Matthew 3, answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John the Baptist consented. And when Jesus was baptized, baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, Jesus. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and it comes to rest on him. Then look, here's the Holy Spirit's response. Yes, baptism, this is a good and right thing. Yes, this is a good and right thing. Then in verse 17, we see God's response. The Trinity, the co-equals, the co-eternal interacting together. And behold, a voice from heaven said in verse 17, This is my beloved Son whom I loved, and I am well pleased. So it pleases God. It pleases God. And in this passage of scriptures, we begin to see all the reasons why baptism is essential. Just the, the foundational core of why baptism is essential and moves us closer to God. And every Christian should be baptized. Have you been baptized? Have you? And if not... Are you a Christian? And if you are a Christian and you haven't been baptized, then man, you got to work that out. You got to do that quick. Find some believer who can baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to look at a couple passages of Scripture within this Matthew uh, 3 14 through 17 to kind of help us understand about baptism. Because you might be sitting there going, Look, baptism, you know, it's no big deal. It's just this thing man made to do, and we just kind of have to do it and john the baptist was different than jesus is and that's confusing so why even mess with it or maybe you're um, baptized in some other way or to some other thing but here in the scriptures it says you and i need one baptism that's all we need just one baptism look at what um, john says in verse 14 he's literally john the baptizer he's baptizing people left and right for the praise of god so that help people have a symbol and a public celebration of them turning from their sins and living for God. And what does he say? I need to be baptized by you. This is the guy that Jesus said, there is none greater born among women than this man, John the Baptist. Moses, nope. Elijah, nope. Isaiah, nope. Deborah, nope. Phoebe, no way. 
So all of these people that you see, he goes, look, even I, what, the guy that Jesus calls the greatest of men born among women, says, I need to be baptized by you. So that just simply shares with us and says that we need to be saved, marked by the Holy Spirit, sealed by the Holy Spirit, and then to move forward in that. There is no one, no Christian, no person that God desires to not be baptized. He wants you to be saved, then baptized. And if you're a believer and you've never been baptized, it's time to do it. And if you don't have the assurance of baptism, like, ah, I just did it because I was caught up in something or that kind of made me or I had no choice in it, however that might work, go talk to a mature spiritual believer, a, a pastor in your local church, a pastor in your home church, and go, hey, I just have some questions. Here's kind of my baptism experience is how do I feel about that? Because I'm feeling unsure. And then they'll help you understand and unpack biblically what's right and what's true. Here's the other thing that I would say to you. The other thing that I would say to you. You and I, yes, we need that one baptism, but others need to see us and know we are baptized. We need to proclaim that we are followers of Jesus Christ and include that in our grace story and testimony. To, to let people know that we are saved that we've been baptized because that's the symbol of the profession of faith that we have in order to live for Christ. And when you go to get baptized, if you have the opportunity to, invite others there. Not just the one who's baptizing you, but certainly someone else to come along and celebrate or other people from your church if you're in an environment that can do that or in your neighborhood. And they don't have to be saved. I've seen and heard of people coming to Jesus at baptisms because they see the transformation in their friend their grandchild, their, their stepson or daughter, their, their spouse, whatever that is. And it just, it, it, God works and the Holy Spirit moves and they can do that. So if you have the opportunity to be baptized with others, do that. Because what baptism does, what baptism is, is it's meant to, as it says in this passage of Scripture, verse 15, to fulfill all righteousness. I mean, if there was anyone, any man, any fully man, any fully God that walked the planet and said, you know what, I'm good, I don't need baptism, it's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ didn't have to be baptized. Didn't and essentially need baptism. We needed for him to show us and model us that way. That's why he says, let it be so now. It is fitting for us to what? Fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. So if you're a Christian and you've not been baptized, then why should you be? Just like Jesus said, to fulfill all righteousness. If you have the opportunity to be baptized, then do it quickly. Do not wait. Go and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit with God's approval overseen by a good Christian leader from within your local church. Do it. Find a believer who can do that. The great thing about baptism in sort of its broad sense is it, is it shows us and models for us, and as it models for others, this is who we ought to be. Like, it ought to be better than how I am. I should, I should speak better and believe better and act better and think better. Why? Because in the power of Jesus Christ, I can. He models and he shows that for me. It also puts us in a condition that's acceptable to God. Remember said, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. God speaks that over Jesus. And as a son or a daughter of Jesus Christ, when you're baptized, he speaks that and puts that over you. Look, it's simple. Baptism pleases God and makes it easier for others to get to Jesus. Why? One, because you invite them to your baptism celebration like we do here. We do it on the coast. We go to the beach. We invite a bunch of people. And it never has never, never failed us that when we're baptizing, other people begin to gather around. They come down from their beach houses and they come around and go, what's going on? Look at this guy. He keeps dunking these people. Is he trying to drown these people? Oh, other Christians come. This is a baptism. Let's celebrate. And we always get other people to gather in with us on the beach as we celebrate. So my advice to you is, if it's at all possible, get with others and celebrate that and let them know that you love Jesus first and foremost. I end with this one thing before it's up to us to respond like Christ. One thing, baptism is essential. It's essential. There, there's no way around it. You, you, you can't be a Christian and, and not be baptized. God's not okay with that. I could say it in, a, in the positive way. When you become a Christian and you get baptized, that pleases God. That pleases God. So my encouragement 
to you is to be baptized ASAP as soon as you can. Find that, solve that, figure that out. Get in a way to do that and to be baptized. There are two kinds of people watching this video and you're one of these two. You're either a Christian or you're not. And if you're not a Christian, then, then my biggest thing to you is salvation is absolutely essential. Wait, I thought you said baptism is essential. Yes, it's both and, not an either or, not a replacement. Baptism doesn't replace salvation. So I would say to you as we pray for you, and all Christians who are watching this now are going to be praying for those in their life that aren't Christians. Let's pray together. God, we pray for those who aren't saved that they would confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God raised them from the dead because it's with their mouth that they confess unto justification and righteousness and it's with their heart that they believe unto salvation. So Lord, I, I pray that they'll be saved. That the person watching this who's made it with us all the way to the end would just simply say, yes, I want to be saved and then yes, I want to be baptized and they would tell people that and seek that out and help to please God and to live the life that God always had for them. It's not a baptism of Apollos or Peter or, or, or Paul or any of those guys. This is a baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what unites us. One baptism among all Christians across denominational lines and non-denominational lines, across country and state, the global lines. It says we are all baptized into one baptism the baptism that is in the Bible, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of God the Father, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, we pray for the Christians who have yet to be baptized for whatever reason that is, Lord. Um, there might be extenuating circumstances. We pray that you will provide a way for them to be baptized soon. We pray that they will go forth. And if they're already baptized, that they will just celebrate and remember the great love that God had for them and sending his son and to fulfill all righteousness that they have been baptized and what a celebration that is and maybe just tell people about it it's easy here on the coast for us to talk about water sports and what we do we're in the water all the time so lord i pray that we'll use that as a springboard to open up the conversation about others relationship with jesus we love you lord it's in jesus name we pray amen i love you guys have a great and wonderful rest of the day